Let's come together now in prayer. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, are we so set in our ways that no one notices the changes that you are making in our spirit? Lord, how can we show on the outside what you are doing and what you have done for us on the inside? Lord, we admit to the mistakes that have kept us from being the kind of fellowship you intend for your church to be, O oh Lord. And we admit that there were things that we said, and there are ways that we expressed our faith in you that had more to do with how we want things to be than how you've designed things to be. Lord, when we work against your holy plan, when we act as though our way is better, Lord, confront, correct, convict. And Lord, we pray, forgive us. Lord, do not leave us in the conviction we deserve that is ours. For Lord, then who could stand? But help us to stand again for truth. That your praise may be on our lips and be the living testimony of our lives. And that you're in, in your great renewal of your people, your church, O oh Lord, that you will cause us to be who you made us to be. And in that wholeness of being, may we be more steadfast in your word, in the living and sharing of the gospel, that we will begin to be that new, to have that new conversation with you in the whole world as you call us into service. Lord, this in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God, created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. Who are you? When Paul calls on churches that he's right that he's writing to, to self-identify. He, he call, calls them out. Who do you think you are? It is not unlike Jesus saying to his disciples, who do people say that I am? It's important for us in recognizing Christ to also recognize who we are and who we think we are in relation to him. Paul doesn't pull any punches. Not only are the churches expected to explain who they are, but why they do the things that they do. And that's not for his satisfaction, but for their awareness of how God is moving in their lives and also how they are changing and how they're not changing from the people they were before they encountered the gospel of Christ. Having come to God and having a belief in God, do people who knew you before, you grew in this great relationship and faith, do they still recognize you? Do they even recognize who you are anymore? Can they relate to you in the same way? Has knowing Christ as Lord and Savior, having a Christian faith, changed the conversations of your life? And if it hasn't, I hope you're asking why, because it is, it is supposed to. It doesn't mean that who you were doesn't matter. Far from that. It greatly matters. But who you are and who are you becoming should be obvious, and who you are becoming should be the you you always should have been. You are made in the image of God, beautifully and wonderfully, and if that's not who you are right now, then make the change. Seek the change, and let others recognize that change because perhaps then they will see the evidence of God's love in you as you had it witnessed from others. And leave the old conversations of lust and desire and deceit and selfishness, leave them behind and let God's forgiveness do its work. Use them as a springboard of penance and transformation to convict you into a closer relationship with God who loves you. And may the peace of Christ empower you in that new walk of faith. And this day and always, may God be with you. Amen.